Okay, in the previous video, I gave a demonstration on how to wait for a window to load. And in this next video, what I'm going to show is how to set window text to a specific window. And in this case, what we're going to set text to is the username field on the Google Talk window. Now we're going to use the same code from before where we use shell execute to open the application and then the do loop to wait for the window to load. Now we're just going to take it uh, one step further. Some of the things that you're going to need to add are going to be the API statements. First off, the constant wm underscore setx, which is window message underscore setx, and then the API function send message by string. Not a function, but procedure. So it's public declare ptr save function send message by string. PTR save, this will be required when you're using a 64 bit version of Windows. If not, it's simply going to be public declare function. And then, of course, the remainder. But I'm going to undo that change because I am using 64 bit Windows. So once you have send message by string and window message underscore set text, go ahead and go back to your module to where we have this code already set up that we have worked on in the previous videos. And we're going to I'm going to load up the Google Talk application. So what we've done before is used find window to find the Google Talk application. We're finding it by the title bar. In this case, one question that you may have is how do you find this window right here, the the edit box, the text box. So what we're going to have to do is use an application that searches the system for window handles and window processes. In this case, I'm using SPY++. SPY++ is provided in the Visual Studio suite. And so what I'm gonna have to do though, is if you don't have an application like this, I mean, there's several available on the internet that do the exact same thing. And all they do is just a graphical user it's a graphical user interface that shows you all the window handles and processes in, in your system. And so what I'm going to do is look for Google Talk on mine. And this is what I'll use to be finding the text box. So here I have it. Google Talk, this is the window. This is the window text. And then what's not in the quotes is the handle name. So I'm going to expand that. And these are the windows that branch out. It's going to be in the main view. I'm going to expand that. And then it looks like in the main view we have the sign in dialog. There's a chat title, contact list view, status view, and rich edit. It's probably going to be in this one, so we're going to expand this tree. Yeah, there it is. Username, which is the, that's going to be the label itself, the static text. And this is a little bit unusual, but it looks like the username, this box right here, is actually a combo box even though it doesn't have a little drop down, so, but I'm going to expand that and then we have the edit window. Then there's also one right here, so here we're just going to have to kind of play with it a bit to see if this is the right box that we're using. A lot of applications out there are very useful to where they're, they're, they're identifying the window handle and the window class name by simply placing your mouse over the, the window but in, in this though, I like having the branch, the, the tree branch, so I know how to find this window because when you're using Windows API, you're gonna need to find first the main window and then from the, way, the main window, you're gonna need to find, find the next window the, or the child. And after you find that window, then you need to find the next child and so on until you find the window. So I like having this tree branch, that way I know how to actually put these windows together when I'm putting the API statements. So I'm gonna go back to my module. I think I have enough to get us started. You'll also need to get find window ex, which is to find the, the child. We've only put find window in our API. I have find window ex already set up, and that's gonna be this statement right here. Find window ex. And again, this can be found in the API viewer application that I, I have showed, or you can simply look up the find window ex API statement online. Okay, so let's start writing this code out. We have the find window already set up for Google Talk. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait 0.3 seconds. This is a 
a feature I already have built in on my module. This won't work if you type it in on yours, but I do have a video that shows how to create a timeout function if you want to have that same code. I'm just putting this to fully allow the, the window to load. Usually what I do, in this case because I'm waiting for a specific text box window to appear, usually I would put that code in the, in the do loop and wait for the text box window to appear. But in this video, just for the example of showing you how to send text to a text box, I'm not going to bother doing that. The do loop, I'm just going to wait 0.3 seconds by that time the window should fully load. So I'm going to put, we said the first window was the main view. So I'm going to put this side by side, that way I can create this. Okay, so main view is the first one we need to find. So it's going to be, I'm going to do a variable. Let's see if I can collapse this real quick. That way we can see this window entirely. Main view is equal to find window ex. We're going to do h window 2, which was the main window up here. 0 ampersand. The name of the class is main view. And then here's where we would put like the caption of the window. We can see the caption is at main, but I'm just going to leave it as a VB null string since I know the exact class name. And a good practice for you doing this is as you go, test to make sure you're finding the window. So I'm just going to do a quick test to make sure this window is here. If I hit F5, I see that it is returning a value, so there is something there. So the next thing is going to be sub window, find window ex. Now you're not going to use h window two here. You're going to use the previous window that you now have main view. So that way we follow along down the line. Okay, that's going to be zero ampersand. The next window that I see on here is three two seven seven zero. That's that's the class the class name. So I'm going to put three two seven seven zero. And I'm just gonna test this really quick, make sure that's that found that's found. And yeah, it is returning a value. And what I'm gonna do for the next subwindow, I'm just gonna use the same variable name. Subwindow, it's gonna be find window ex. It's gonna be the next window I believe is the combo box. And I'm gonna try to speed this up because it's I know this this takes a while. And again, I'm just gonna make sure that works. It's good. And it looks like the I believe the next window is the text box window. Yeah, edit. So this should be the one that we're we're looking at here. So I'm gonna just copy and paste this. Just change it to now edit and sub window and change this to edit edit. And now I'm gonna do message box edit window. And yeah, still found it. Now the last thing that we're going to do now that we found it is do send message by string. And it's going to be the edit window. Window message underscore set text. Zero. And then I'm just going to type in username underscore test. And this should work. I'm going to hit F5. And there you have it. It's set the username text. So this is just a real quick demonstration on how to send, how to set text to another window. Now it can be pretty challenging because usually you have windows within windows and that's really just the way it works. But when you have an application like Microsoft Spy++ to help you out, it's good to know the hierarchy that way you can follow down the line and just create those statements. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.